Hey guys, how you going? Welcome back to another video. Now I'm dressed slightly differently today and the reason for that is because this video is gonna be all about body image. So we're gonna be talking about loose skin, stretch marks, cellulite, and insecurities, things that are traditionally seen as flaws in most people's eyes. I'm gonna take you through some of my own insecurities or things that I notice about myself that just might not be so obvious to you guys on first glance. And the point of this video really is to help normalize these things and help you guys see that these are normal things to have and nothing to be ashamed of and really drive home the point that sometimes we really are our own worst critics. Now just in case you have never seen one of my videos before, I'm going to give you a super super brief background on me. My name is Lucy, I'm 30 years old and several years ago I was overweight and extremely unfit and I had absolutely no idea what to do about it. Since then I have been through a weight loss journey and really have sort of dodged through the minefield of health and fitness and come out the other side with a passion to help women especially understand how it can actually be very simple and an enjoyable process to either lose weight, um, get fitter and stronger, or just have a nice, healthy and balanced lifestyle. So if this sounds like a video that's gonna interest you, we will get straight on into it. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to talk about are going to be aesthetic things. Now, a question I get all the time is, do I have loose skin, stretch marks, or cellulite? And the answer to that question is yes, yes, and yes, I do. I get all of them. I have all of them. And it's a really interesting one because prior to YouTube and prior to having an Instagram account, I wasn't aware of the fact that I had any loose skin. I had lost weight and gotten fitter and stronger, and to me, my focus was on my training and the fact that I felt functional and felt good. But I started getting a lot of questions as my Instagram got a bit more popular, and a lot of people were asking me, do you have loose skin? And it was only then that I realized that I actually do have a lot of loose skin on my stomach. It's just not immediately obvious. So standing here in front of you, you probably wouldn't be able to notice it, but we're gonna do a little cutaway and I'm gonna to explain to you in a little bit more detail where I hold that loose skin and how it affects me. All right guys, I've turned you around. So we're gonna talk about loose skin. This is what I look like normally, so I'm not doing anything in particular, but if I was to touch my stomach, you can see that it actually moves quite a lot and it's a little bit elastic-y as well. So I look pretty normal just standing in front of you, but if you touch my skin, it's just a little bit softer and more elastic-y than normal. So the lower belly is mostly where the loose skin is. And again, if I just stand here, I look fairly normal, like nothing too, crazy but if I sort of turn sideways you can see that there's like this little bit here that's always going to be there it just never will be like washboard ab style um so that just hangs there obviously if I was doing an exercise where I was leaning over that's going to be more obvious so for example a plank or a push-up it's going to be more obvious but that's not really an issue I would again rather be a healthy weight and that be there, then be overweight and unfit and not have as fun a lifestyle as I have now and such an amazing job as well. So that is the loose skin. So there you go, I do have a little bit of loose skin. Now I don't know if that was worse or better than you expected, but I have never had any surgery to remove loose skin or anything like that. And like I say, I was never even aware of it until I started getting questions about it. Um, I was just really more focused on my training and how I felt. So it hasn't really ever bothered me. Uh, when I train, I notice it a little bit more now when I'm doing certain movements, but I nearly always wear high-waisted leggings just because I find them so comfortable. I don't know how anyone can wear low, low rise leggings that drive me insane <laughs> but I find them so comfortable so it's not really an issue although I still get a little bit that hangs over the top like if I'm in certain positions but like I say it's really not a big deal to me and I'd much rather live a healthier and happier lifestyle and have this little bit of loose skin than still be overweight and unfit. Now point number two is stretch marks. And I think this is an interesting one because I get a lot of messages saying people are scared to lose weight because they might have stretch marks or might have loose skin. But the thing is, is a lot of people who already are overweight have got stretch marks. And not only that, but I mean, I've had stretch marks since I was a teenager, since I was growing up. Um, I just had stre stretch marks from just the, the growing process. Um, so I have them on my legs, I have them on my hips. 
um, a little bit on my boobs as well and I've got a couple of big ones on my stomach but to be honest with you they have always been there I've never not had them so again it's just something that I've become accustomed to seeing and sure like it would be nice for them not to be there but it really doesn't bother me too much and I've never seen it bother anybody else. We're gonna head back to the mirror and I'm just gonna show you in a little bit more detail some of the stretch marks and we will have a little discussion about what we think about them. Okay, let's talk about stretch marks. So, when you come up close, ignore my psoriasis for now, we'll talk about that later, that's those things there. But you can see down here that, these ones here, there's one here and I've got one here and another one there. So I've got three really big stretch marks, which they will never go away. They are like really deep. But there's some around the sides that I've literally had ever since I was a teenager, like before I was overweight. I've always had these. These were just from growing. So they're never gonna go. And it's just something that I've gotten so used to. And I don't expect to go. To be honest with you, it doesn't bother me. And if you're worried about what men think about these things, I've seen, Basically every man I've ever seen has got stretch marks in some regard as well. It is a normal part of growing up for most people. So again, nothing to be ashamed of. I've got plenty on my legs as well, if you can see. Plenty around there. On my hips as well. They're everywhere. But again, it's just the natural part of it. It's never gonna go and it's nothing to be ashamed of. All right, so the next one we're gonna talk about is cellulite. Oh, cellulite, I get so many questions about cellulite, asking me how you get rid of it, what exercises you can do, what are the tips and tricks? And honestly, it's, it's normal, like most of us have it, and I genuinely have never found a way to get rid of it. Um, so I specifically have it on one leg, one leg's fine, one leg's not so good. Um, I'm gonna show you again in the mirror in a second the difference. Um, but there is a reason why I have it on one leg more than the other. Um, now cellulite is something that probably does bother me more than loose skin or stretch marks, just because to me it's really, really obvious and I am very subconsciously aware of it. So even when I'm not trying to think about it or I'm not looking at it, I'm actually always constantly aware that it's there. Um, but I never actively try and change it. The only things that I've found that may impact it slightly was having a slightly lower body fat percentage, being hydrated and sort of doing some resistance training for a consistent amount of time. Um, but realistically, I've always had it, I always will have it and I have no expectation that it will go away. Um, so it's just something that I have to accept. All right, let's head over to the mirror and have a quick look at the cellulite. Okay, so the last one we're gonna talk about is cellulite. Now, when you look at me straight on, my legs, I don't know if you'll be able to tell it very easily in the camera, but my legs are different sizes. So this one, my left leg, is wider than my right leg, and my left hip is also bigger than my right hip. So there's just more fat. I had a DEXA scan once for my birthday, um, one of the best birthday presents I've had, and it showed that there was more fat. I wonder if I could find the results at some point and show you, but I have more fat in this leg and also a little bit more muscle as well. Um, now, the reason that I have one leg bigger than the other is because when I was born, I had a birthmark that ran all the way from the top of my, sorry, the lower part of my back all the way to the top of my foot and it was all the way down the bottom and it was one of those sort of red wine port birthmarks and it faded over the years but it meant that I have more blood vessels in that leg therefore that leg is bigger um, so it doesn't really affect me sometimes this leg is weaker than the other leg but that's pretty much normal for a lot of people anyway however it also means that I have cellulite on that leg I'm going to show you my right leg first so this is my right leg looks pretty much normal. There's nothing to, there is a little bit of cellulite, like if I was in a certain angle, you might notice it, but most of the part is quite smooth, believe it or not. Um, and I'm super dehydrated at the moment, but this is my left leg. So you may just about be able to see the outline of my birthmark there, but most of the other parts of my leg, it's quite faded but there is cellulite on this leg. So obviously the other one was quite smooth, but this one has got a decent amount of cellulite um, and it's bigger as well. Um, so that is probably one of my bigger insecurities 
Um, but it's honestly not super noticeable. I just find myself subconsciously, I would always stand to this side. If I'm talking to somebody, I usually stand facing this side. I just literally do it out of being completely subconscious about it and not thinking. So yeah, it's just something that's always played on my mind. Um, but like I say, there's very little that I've been able to do to control it. So I've just had to, got to a point where I just have to accept it and that's okay because we're all unique and to be honest with you, most people have cellulite. I also asked a few different guys I know what their opinion was on cellulite, stretch marks and all that sort of stuff and every single one of them was just like, no, I just know it's a normal part of you know, life and that doesn't really bother them and I honestly think they don't really notice it as much as we think they do anyway. So um, if that gives you any help at all as well. Okay guys, so I feel like those are the three main aesthetic questions that I get a lot. Um, but I also have a condition that I'm gonna talk about which is called psoriasis. So I know a lot of you guys who follow me will already know that I have psoriasis and quite a few of you actually have it yourself. But for those who've never heard of it before, psoriasis is an autoimmune disease. So it's a genetic disease, but it's also incurable. So treatment options are fairly limited and it can be affected by quite a few different factors in your life. So personally for me, I've had psoriasis as long as I can remember. I think I was around seven when I was diagnosed with it. And it's something that I've struggled with my whole life to definitely in terms of managing my psoriasis. Um, now, I've worked out over the years some things that personally trigger my condition. A few of those for me personally are my diet, um, stress levels, and the environment that I'm in. So lifestyle factors for me are a huge one. And so I work very hard to manage that. Now, I'm super, super lucky and fortunate at the moment that the conditions I'm in have meant that my skin's in pretty good condition. Um, however, about a year ago, that was not the case. And I'm gonna put some photos up on the screen of how it looks. Now, the photos that you're looking at, my skin was like that for the best part of a decade that I can remember. Um, so it's pretty much always been like that. And I've never really been in a position where my skin's been as good as it is now for as long as it has been. Um, so I'm always on edge that it's actually gonna reverse and literally overnight it could flare up it could it literally could flare up within an hour so um this is the problem with autoimmune diseases and so i think the reason that psoriasis has such an impact on me personally and i think to the wider community who have psoriasis is just because it's there's so lack so much lack of control you can do everything right you can eat well you can put your medication on you can not be stressed, you can exercise within reasonable limits, um, you can be doing everything right and it can flare up within an hour and it's so hard to manage it in that way because you feel like you're fighting a losing battle all the time. And that being said, I'm really, really lucky that right now my skin has been in the best condition that I can ever remember it being in. And that has come down to a combination of a few different factors, I believe, but with, as with almost autoimmune diseases, you just never ever know. So at the moment, I manage my psoriasis very naturally. So I try to avoid certain dietary triggers that I know personally flare up for my skin and I try my best not to get stressed out in different situations as stress causes it to flare up really, really quickly. So in terms of treating my actual psoriasis, I used to use topical steroids, um, which is a very common medication for psoriasis, but I was on them for the best part of 20, 24 years, something like that. And I was finding that, as you've seen in the photos, my skin was the worst it's ever been. So I actually came off the steroid medication and switched to using just organic coconut oil on my skin. And I've only used that since. I will very, very rarely put on a tiny bit of steroid cream if it's flared up really bad. Um, but I try to stick to managing it through diet, through lifestyle factors, and through just using coconut oil and drinking enough water. So like I say, I'm really fortunate that my skin is really good at the moment. I feel like I'm tempting fate by saying these, but I really wanna talk about it because it's been such a big part of my life and really it can affect my motivation and my mood very, very quickly when it flares up. And I'm sure anybody who's got a condition that's chronic can relate to that in any, any way. But I mainly get affected by it on my stomach and my back. I get a little bit on my legs, but it's quite patchy. And then I get it on my arms and my face and my neck as well. So at the moment, really, I've just got it on these little bits of my arms. That's quite stubborn. If I ever get it around my elbows, it just will never go away. It doesn't matter how long I 
try and treat it for or what I do it just is always there so it doesn't bother me too much because honestly I think people just look at it and they think it's eczema so you know that's quite common and people don't really question it too much in terms of my stomach I've got a couple of patches here and then one big patch here and other than that there's a couple around the sides and that's pretty much it at the moment there's a little bit here I think as well but I'm really fortunate that it's it's actually really good. In terms of my face, I've got a little bit on my neck, but it's quite pale, so you won't really be able to see it too much. And I used to get it quite bad around my eyes. So yeah, it's definitely, psoriasis has definitely been something that has caused me a lot of stress and insecurity in the past, especially when my skin has been flared up. Um, so like you saw in those photos, that is what I was dealing with pretty much all of my life. And it's really, really hard when you think you're in school and you've got to get changed for PE for example and you've got that you know I used to work in a casino and we had to get changed into our uniform and even if you're standing in the change rooms just in your bra and your trousers you know you've got to take your top off and not everyone is covered in these massive red scales like I was um, but that being said it can appear overnight and that is probably one of the biggest stresses and hard things to deal with when you have an autoimmune disease um, but Sometimes I also count my blessings because, you know, there's people who've got far worse conditions and are living in chronic pain and really debilitating diseases. And as far as autoimmune diseases go, although psoriasis can be really stressful mentally and it can be really painful as well. There's been times where I was sitting at my desk crying in pain because it was just, it feels like you've got chapped lips but all over your body and you can't do anything. If you put moisturiser on, it stings. Um, Ultimately, it's, it's not a debilitating disease in that way personally. So I'm very fortunate in that regard. And that's what I try and remind myself of when I'm in these positions where it's getting me down. I also made a post a little while ago on Instagram, but it would have got buried down into the depths of my Instagram feed, which I will pop the picture up here. And I find it an interesting post because I put this post up and that was the first time I'd really been honest about the fact I had psoriasis or just I spoke about it and how it made me feel and the picture is as you can see me standing taking a photo in the mirror and I remember a lot of people didn't even notice the psoriasis and they actually just more noticed the outfit or what I was doing in the photo rather than my skin condition and I think that sometimes highlights that we are very critical of ourselves but we also are so highly attuned and aware of our own insecurities that we can't believe that other people can't see them and it's often the case that on first glance people just don't notice these things as much or they actually just genuinely don't really care so i hope that gives you some peace or a little bit of happiness if you're dealing with something similar all right we're going to talk about weight now it's an interesting topic because obviously i have gone from being overweight to I went I got quite lean when I was in Melbourne and I was doing lots of calisthenics and lots of training I was very very lean and I was eating mostly plant-based plant which I think helped um, and I, it was the first time I'd really gone into resistance training of any sort so my body responded very very well and then I came back to the UK put on a little bit of weight changed, changed up my training slightly got a bit bulkier and really I go through phases of being a tiny bit heavier and a little bit leaner um, so for me I've got to a point where weight doesn't bother me so in terms of the number on the scale I have absolutely no idea what I weigh I could probably guess I weigh somewhere between 63 and 72 kilos it sounds like a very specific guess but it's just going off where I know I've been at in the past when I felt the way I feel um, the day I stopped weighing myself was the day I felt like a lot of weight had been lifted it's probably not the rest, best phrase, but had been lifted off my shoulders. I felt like that cloak of just constantly compar comparing myself and checking my progress was lifted off me. And finally, I was free to just enjoy what I was doing, enjoy my food that I was eating, make balanced and healthy decisions, and enjoy my training rather than constantly looking for results or progress. Okay, so something I'm really passionate about is the fact that people think losing weight will make them happy. I get so many messages saying, I just want to lose this weight because I know it will make me happy, or I just want to be skinny, skinny because it will make me happy. And I just want to stand here and tell you as someone who's been in all these different positions, 
that will not make you happy because the same problems will always arise. The mindset is what needs to change and not your body. So if you want to lose weight because it's healthier to be a lighter weight or to be in a healthy weight range and you want to be able to move more functionally, that is perfect and I am 100% behind you. But if you want to lose weight because you think that it's gonna make you happier or make you more accepted in the community or make other people like you, I'm here to tell you that it's not worth your while. It's really interesting because I was that person. I used to stand in front of the mirror when I was overweight, crying every single day. None of my clothes fit. I didn't like anything that I wore. I hated that I didn't know what to do about it. I was just standing there and I was just trapped in this vicious circle. And I think that's very hard for a lot of people that haven't been in that position to understand. But it's something that, I mean, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it because I can so easily relate to people who are in that position right now. And I remember standing there going, I'll ju I just, in my head, I'll just be happy when I'm skinny, when I've lost weight. And I went through the process of losing weight and I got to a point where I was really enjoying my training and I felt good because I felt fit and strong and, and healthy and I felt like my eating was under control. But from then onwards, I have gone through ups and downs and peaks and troughs of feeling good about my body, going through periods of being injured and not being able to train and that constantly affecting my mindset, going through phases where I've had no motivation and I've just felt really lazy and then berating myself for it. And I think I've come out the other side now with a pretty good acceptance of who I am and where I'm at. And really, I have figured out that weight doesn't have a lot to do with it and how you look is not important. So I remember when I was overweight, I very naively believed that if I lost weight and was a healthy weight, people would have more respect for me or they would just think I'm a better person. And now I'm in a position where I am a healthy way and I can tell you that I was definitely wrong. I now work in a very male dominated industry and not only that but also a very looks dominated industry as well. And there's nothing wrong with having aesthetic goals at all. In some aspects I still have aesthetic goals but I have come to a point to realise that where you really get the respect is through what you can do or who you are as a person and nothing to do with what you look like. Uh, people will respect you because you follow your passions, because you're a kind person, because you are true to yourself, because you work hard, because you train well, because you can do things that they can't do and they, they aspire to do them. And it doesn't matter what weight you are or what fitness level you are. If I'm in the gym and I see somebody who is overweight but they are working hard, I have nothing but utmost respect for them. In fact, it makes me want to go up and just give them a hug. Like, I really, I really do. I just love seeing it because to me, that is so much, just so amazing. Somebody picking themselves up and bringing themselves into the gym who doesn't feel comfortable there or who just comes in and actually owns it. And that is where the respect comes from and nothing to do with how you look or your weight. So really what these things have taught me is that why are we so hard on ourselves? You know, if you're looking long term and not tracking every single thing that's happening short term, but you're living a healthy life and you're enjoying the day to day processes that you're going through, that's going to be so much more important than the fact that you feel like you're heavier than you should be. One last way that I like to look at it is I like to say, who am I? You know, when I'm having a day where I feel a bit uh, about my weight, I sort of think, who am I? Okay, I'm Lucy. And I'm not competing, I'm not an Olympic athlete, I'm not a professional athlete in any way. I do what I love to live a healthy, balanced lifestyle and I got the added stress or bonus that my job is in the fitness industry so maybe I should be a little bit more concerned about the way I look but what I'm concerned about is the fact that I am healthy and I'm happy and I'm enjoying my training because that's my message. That's what I truly believe is important and what's not important is doing things purely, like 100% purely for aesthetics. That being said, there's times where I feel like I need to lose a little bit of weight or, you know, I just, I'm happy with my weight, but it doesn't affect me the way it used to affect me. And it's taken me a long time to realize that these things just aren't important. And more importantly, other people don't care. Sounds harsh but they don't care. And I think sometimes we do things for other people too much or we, t we sort of set on too much on what other people think and they're not even thinking about us, they're thinking about themselves. So try to be kind to yourself and look at the bigger picture. There's one message that I always try and get through to people is just look at the big picture because that's gonna give you so much more perspective than just focusing on what's happening right now. 
we're going to quickly touch on some more mental and internal insecurities. So one thing that you guys will have no idea about is the fact that I suffer very badly with imposter syndrome. If you've never heard of it, I'll put a little description up here. But essentially, I struggle with the fact, I guess the best way for me to um, explain it is I perceive myself one way and I struggle to see how other people perceive me. And I think especially last year, as my YouTube started to grow and as my Instagram started to grow, I started to question why people wanted to listen to me. And I know, I think I've got to a point now that I can accept that people like the fact that they can relate to me. Um, but I still am very, very self-critical. I'm probably my own worst enemy in so many ways and I have to work extremely, extremely hard to really be proud of myself and to accept that people want to listen to me. To be honest with you, I've always been like this and it's something that I've had to work very, very hard to overcome. Um, but in the last few months, I feel like I've done quite well in just trying to back myself a little bit more and believe in myself. I'll sometimes scroll back through my Instagram account or go back years and years and years and look at where I've come from and I almost don't even recognise myself. Um, you know, the physical transformation or my, you know, the progress I've made in my career is one thing, but the mental progress that I've made has is a whole nother level. Um, I can now back myself a lot more and believe in myself and I, honestly my self-belief was literally on the floor and my self-worth was on the floor years ago and I've been slowly building it up and sometimes I have little drops and, and I fall down and you know, I have to pick myself up and dust myself off but I'm getting a lot better at it and I'm a lot more gritty and determined about it but it's just something that I thought I would share because I just don't think you guys see that side of it. Something else that I don't think I've actually mentioned before no, I think I've spoken about it, is the fact that I also used to struggle very badly with anxiety and for about a year and a half had depression as well. Um, this was several years ago and this was after I'd lost the weight. And um, it was very hard to overcome that and it took me a long time and a lot, a lot of work to get through it. So I have a lot of respect for anyone who goes through anything of that type, any mental health struggles at all. Um, it gave me a huge amount of respect and a huge amount of perspective on these topics. And um, I am grateful that I went through that because it's made me a better, more understanding person. And I feel I can relate a lot more now to other people in that position than I could before. Now talking about that is definitely not an insecurity. I talk about it a lot to people and I have absolutely no shame in saying that because I genuinely think that people who struggle with mental health conditions are some of the toughest people out there. And again, I have nothing but respect, like respect for them. Um, so I'm just sharing it because I actually just don't think I've ever mentioned it. And finally, on the personality and mental health side of things, I'm gonna talk about confidence. So I think a good way of looking at it is to talk about gym intimidation. I obviously work in a gym environment now, um, but the first time I ever stepped foot in the gym, I was petrified. I used to go to the outdoor gyms when I started calisthenics, I was petrified. And I was really, really fortunate to um, make friends with somebody who reached out to me on Instagram. Um, named, his name is Kirsten, and he does calisthenics as well. And I honestly feel like Kirsten has such a big impact on my life because we would go train at the park together and he would happily talk away to anybody in the park and I'd sort of sit there and be like, oh, nervous and scared. But then I picked up his ways and I just became so unafraid to talk to strangers and I really came out of my shell and I grew from somebody who was shy and insecure and like I said, had a really low self-worth to somebody who would just go and randomly talk to a stranger and make friends with them. And my connections grew, my friendship circle grew, and I honestly put a lot of it down to Kirsten. To be honest with you, if it wasn't for that, I probably never would have even made a YouTube channel or an Instagram account. So it's really interesting to me how these things can have an impact uh, on one another and just one or two decisions that you made. So my decision to actually go and meet him and hang out with him to train has affected so much of my life and really was a driver for me to take hold of my personality and get a grip and be like, come on Lucy, you need to just get a grip and just back yourself a little bit more and actually, you know, believe in yourself. And um, I'm so, so grateful that I did. So confidence is something that I've always struggled with. And it was only in the last few years that I've really come into my own and 
backed myself a little bit more and just believed in myself. And uh, there is times where my confidence slips and I have huge crashes, like I was saying, having an imposter syndrome, huge crashes in confidence and belief of myself. But it gets easier the more you do it. And trust me, once you start backing yourself, other people will start backing you too. And, you know, I guess the, the, the I always say to people, and this is like my backup advice, if you don't feel confident, just act confident. Act confident and nobody will question you. Just know who you are, be confident with what you're doing and stick to your plans and don't worry about what other people are thinking. Try to block out the external noise. And like I say, if in doubt, act confident and no one will question you. Trust me, it works. All right guys, so I'm just putting my screen recording on because I'm actually gonna go through a few of my Instagram photos. So this is my Instagram profile here. Um, and we're gonna scroll down to one of the first transformation photos that I put up. Um, which was last year, I believe. Let's have a look, this one here. So I put this one up, 2018, okay, two years ago, wow. Um, now, on the outset, people were like, okay, yeah, that's quite a big transformation, that's pretty good. But what I noticed in this photo, which I don't think many people really see, is when you zoom in on this one, now it's pretty grainy because it was taken in quite a dark room. Um, I was also a little bit leaner back then, but anyway, who cares? Um, my stomach around this around my belly button that's where i have the loose skin and stretch marks and i can see the stretch marks even through the pixelation of the image i can see the stretch marks and actually when you zoom out you can almost see how the skin is kind of puckered um same here you can see around these ones around my belly button where they are on that picture and that's almost all i see when i look at that photo ironically uh, so that's an example there and then we're also going to scroll up to this one here so a little hip workout here. Now, as you can see, every time I pull my legs in, there's a bit of loose skin that comes over my leggings. And that to me was so obvious. Like I obviously didn't edit it out or anything like that because it's just a part of who I am. Um, but to me, that's really obvious. Yeah, a lot of people would probably not notice that. I mean, I definitely never had anyone message me about it. And the, thing I, the reason I say these is because I get messages sometimes People say, I was looking through your Instagram profile looking for signs of loose skin or for stretch marks um, because it makes them feel like it's normal or that, you know, they're not the only ones and they couldn't see it, but they are there and I see it. But it's not, big, it's not I'm not saying it's a big deal at all. So here's another in, um, Instagram photo. So it's obviously my profile photo. And again, it's a bit pixelated because of the quality. However, if you zoom in, you can see there's specks of psoriasis all over my stomach, um, quite obviously. Um, dotted around so that's something else I noticed um, and we've also got a photo this one here look at all the psoriasis on there now that's probably to me that's really obvious but maybe again to other people not so obvious all right so we've now discussed all the different insecurities and flaws let's call them let's not call them flaws actually because they're not flaws they're normal and they're just part of who you are what we're going to discuss now is some tools you can use and maybe some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to really just help you not worry about these things and stop comparing yourself so much. You would have all heard that famous saying, comparison is the thief of joy and it is so true and there's some things that I've managed to do and change in my life that have made huge differences to how I feel about myself and I hope you can maybe use them or you may already heard of them to change yours. So I've written them on my laptop so I have them and I won't forget them. First one, unfollow people on social media that make you insecure or make you doubt yourself or make you feel bad about yourself. Trust me, you've probably heard this a million times before that you know, oh, unfollow people that make you unhappy, unfollow people that demotivate you, but trust me until you do it, you won't realize how much of a difference it will make. Go through, clear it out. If they make you feel bad in any way whatsoever, even if it's me, get rid. <laughs> Trust me, you don't need it in your life. If it's something that you, you like their content, but you're looking at their photos and comparing your body to theirs or your skin to theirs or your personality or your success or whatever it might be, get rid. You don't need it and it will make a huge, probably one of the biggest differences to your life. Second, stop checking. And what I mean by this is, I'll give you an example. I can check my body and where I, how my body feels just by standing here or moving. So if I run my hands alongside my hips, I know if I've put on fat or weight 
around my hips or just sighs around my hips just from feeling them and I will be walking and I'll be thinking about it subconsciously or I'll go to the mirror and check my skin and have a quick look just to see if it's got any worse or I'll feel like this when I'm standing just to feel what I feel like can I feel the same size Do my clothes feel the same and I'm constantly checking or I have done in the past and just fight the urge because it really is an urge to do these things I have to stop doing it if I catch myself doing it I'm like no move on <laughs> Every time you walk past a window or a mirror, you have that urge just to have a quick look, just to, to judge. Do I look different? Do I look the same? Do I look good? Do I look bad? In your opinion. And don't do it. Fight the urge. Don't do it. It will make a big difference to you. Okay, the next one is focus on the big picture. Stop berating yourself for the little things that you're doing that you think are wrong or bad. So whether you have sat in your house all day, which you probably have because we're on self-isolation, but whether you've sat in your house all day and really not done much, or you have eaten what you deem to be bad, or you haven't trained, or whatever it might be, let it go. Just let it go and move on. You are where you are, you can't change what's happened in the past. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, no amount of guilt will change the past, and no amount of anxiety will change the future. Just accept where you are, and do your best to move on and live a healthy, happy lifestyle. Think big, because your long-term consistent habits are what's going to make a difference and not what you've done today or what you're going to do tomorrow or what you're going to do on the weekend. So stop stressing about it and be kind to yourself. Okay, the next one is, please believe me when I say that people don't see what you see. We are our own worst critics and I hope that this video and sharing the images and pointing out some of the things that you might not have noticed is really going to highlight to you that that is the case. We really are so highly attuned to be aware of our own insecurities or what we think are flaws that we just can't believe that somebody else wouldn't see it. And a key example is my leg. I, hopefully I would have mentioned it in the clips. I haven't filmed those bits yet. But one of my legs is bigger than the other. And I am so aware of it. You know, it means there's some pairs of jeans that don't fit me just because of my leg or boots that don't fit me. And I can't believe that other people can't see it. I, but in my entire life, I have never met one person who has noticed it before I told them. And I'll say to people, oh, because I have one leg bigger, and then they'll have a look and they'll be like, oh yeah, never, never noticed it. And I swear to God, I know they're telling the truth. Um, and then even if it's something that people do notice, trust me when I say, they probably don't really care. I honestly believe it, they really don't care. So just believe me when I say, people don't see what we see. And the last one is, do something that you enjoy. Create a lifestyle for you that you will love and that's gonna be the best for your mental and physical health. You are where you are now, so stop berating yourself for where you are, stop being hard on yourself, trust the process, and enjoy every single minute of it, because that is the most important thing. We are not here on this planet for a long time, so stop being hard on yourself, and just enjoy who you are and who you spend time with, and do what makes you happy, and that is what I want you to take away from this video. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really hope it helped. Um, I've really enjoyed filming this video. It means a lot to me. It's a topic that I'm very passionate about. Um, so I hope it's really helped you guys. Didn't really make sense. <laughs> I'm off to make a coffee, guys. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Oh, look who joined us at the end here. Take a leaf out of this guy's book. Alfie literally spends his entire life eating kibble and sleeping, and he owns it. He is confident and sassy. He does not care, so take a leave out of his book. Act confident, nobody will question you.